how buckwheat is an incredible soil builder. Farmers have been using it for a century. Buckwheat has a lot of major properties for building soil that nothing else has. In fact, nothing else is a smother crop like buckwheat. This buckwheat, for example, right here is not even a month old. And you can see in this location how tall it is. It's already about 15 inches tall, but you can't see the ground. And so the example of this one right here, and then this extends behind me. I'm gonna talk about how we use buckwheat, why we use it. And we have a food plot seed company. You know, buckwheat is not a proprietary blend. Uh, you can get buckwheat just about anywhere. We sell buckwheat as a convenience to our clients. We actually make the least amount of money on buckwheat to our customers out of any seed because it's so high priced. It's high priced because people have learned and have experienced the uh, positive attributes of buckwheat when it comes to food plotting. And, and really it's no stretch, you know, I recognized buckwheat over 20 years ago uh, in the UP of Michigan. I planted my lawn with buckwheat. We'll talk about how we're using it to plant here in a little bit. But uh, I've planted lawn, brassica, lots of fall blends with it, and there's a lot of reasons for that. It's a smother crop. Complete canopy, shades at the ground, out the ground, and limits weeds from being able to grow underneath. Only the most shade tolerant weeds are gonna grow down there, and they're gonna be low and close to the ground, and they're not gonna have that volume and grow up into the buckwheat like some of the weeds that you have problems with every single year. Now at the same time, because the ground is completely shaded, think of the greenhouse effect. That's actually changing the temperature down by the soil and holding moisture at the soil. So it keeps your soil from actually burning out and scorching out. Buckwheat, and I'm gonna go pull this up. I haven't even seen this this year. Like these are kind of small plants from what I usually do this with. I'm gonna see if I can get a small root ball. That root system on this young plant. Now this plant, was it about a foot tall? It'll grow to actually about five feet tall. This root ball expands to the size of my hand or more. See all these fine roots right here, how that's breaking apart the soil. This is all fine organic matter. These leaves right here are fine organic matter. They, when they dissolve, they turn into a smush of moisture you can see that just squeezing that how that moisture comes right out so not only is this smothering out the ground keeping weeds out it's putting a lot just a huge amount of fine organic matter in the soil and fine organic matter is what plants need corn sorghum winter rye lots of organic matter but it's not fine organic matter. You're putting organic matter into the soil, but it takes years to break down with those substances. This does not. And even the stem here, look at this stem. When I crush that, look how much moisture is in that stem. You can actually drip it out. There's so much moisture in that stem. Completely different than a dried out stock, stock of rye, corn, sorghum. Those are not actual soil builders. They actually put organic matter into the soil, but organic matter is not the only measurement of soil and actually soil improvers. In fact, if it takes years to break that down and takes nutrients to do so, you can actually be hurting yourself and doing yourself a disservice. So buckwheat, again, getting back to that, keeps the ground from eroding. We have a lot of hills. You can see the hill just taper off behind me back there. So we've had heavy rain because this is complete covering, because there's a stem about every three inches on average, four inches, then it limits any kind of flowage through this field and we can eliminate runoff during the summertime during the growing season. Now on top of all that, buckwheat crushes very easily. Now when it's green, it pops back up a little bit more. So when it's not as mature, but when you lay this over, it doesn't pop right back up like rye does. Look at this in my boot. When you go over with a call to packer, we use our Packer Max and we crush this over. It lays down and it's not like rye, even switchgrass. Switchgrass pops right back up. But the buckwheat stays down. And when we want to seed into this, if this buckwheat is about thigh high to waist high, we can rock right through it, spread our seeds into it. We can call to pack it all down. And then I prefer to hit it with Roundup afterwards because then it keeps the buckwheat down, keeps them from growing. That's the one thing about buckwheat. If we mow this, it'll come right back up. You can actually mow it. 
So when I smash this down, it crimps on its own. It's the only plant that'll do that. And then it lays on top of that seed or lays within the seed. It aids in germination. It holds moisture to the ground. The ground is not baked out dry to begin with. And you're putting it into a weed-free environment because of the buckwheat. And oh, by the way, there's all that fine organic matter in those root systems, breaking up the soil, lifting up the soil, and putting all the goodies into the soil that you need to grow a successful crop. Buckwheat. I talk about if it's thigh high, waist high, pretty easy to seed into. And especially if you have larger seeds, like uh, late planted beans, peas, oats, rye, even tillage radish, that'll, those seeds all lay down on the ground and then you smash that over it. And that aids in germination, like putting a quarter inch of soil over the top. However, if you don't have that exact timing down, which we wanna actually build the soil a little bit more out here, we're gonna let this buckwheat get up to waist high, neck high. And what we have with our properties on our, our uh, fall blends for our fall power greens and our big boost brassica, those very easily grow by just throwing those seeds on the ground are some of the easiest blends for actually growing without any kind of tillage, any kind of uh, soil working equipment, uh, disc, tillers, plows, chisel plows, anything like that. All of our food plots you see in Minnesota that are growing out here, we've never had disced, tilled, plowed in any way. We want that fine organic matter to work into that top two inches of the soil and the root system and only improve that top two inches because this down here is not where those plants will grow. It's all in that top layer. That's what good no-till farmers know around in these parts too. They get higher yields per acre when they're planting no-till and they're only working on those top two to three inches of the soil. It's the same with us right now. So when we have that taller buckwheat, we can smash it all down with our Packer Max. We can spray at the same time. And then I'll come back about seven to 10 days later. Typically that coincides with a client trip where I can spray before I leave and then seed when we get back. But bottom line is when you come back, all these stems, these stems right here, and you can see all that fine organic matter, it's all good stuff. But all this stuff right here, this will be four feet long. This will lay there and die. That's every three or four inches. Plenty of soil exposure, but there's still some debris to hold moisture to the ground and aid in germination. So when I come back seven to 10 days later, I can put our power greens, fall power greens on one half and put our big boost on the other. If we want that clover base through the next year, then we can put our Big Boost 365 on one half, we can put our Fall Power 365 on the other, and we have that perennial base in there. But bottom line is all those seeds germinate really well by just throwing them on the soil. It's weed free. You still have the aid of the nutrients you're putting into the soil. You have the aid in germination right here. When you have all that debris and matter on the ground, because you wait or a week or 10 days after you smash it and kill it to seed, those seeds get on the soil and it's a great environment for growing your fall crops. And oh, by the way, you drastically improve the soil during the summertime. I urge you guys to check out uh, one of my old articles. It's Improving Poor Soils for Food Plots. You look it up. I wrote that originally probably in 2009, 2010. Um, I put it on a website in 2012, one of my, my website. And uh, you can look at that and see the parts per million that increase drastically up to 20 times for certain mineral levels, nutrient levels from one year to the next and three year gap. And that was all with buckwheat, rye and clover rotations. And even just the lime that changed uh, the soil that we added on there, the powdered lime, that's what reacts, reacts the fastest. And uh, now we're you know, adv so advanced, we can use uh, our plot start and plot boost by deer grow. And you know, we're spoiled nowadays, we can spray it out instead of having to lug uh, tons and tons of 50 pound bags around, literally 65 tons in eight years in the UP, all bags that I applied out on the, out on the property. So sorry for interrupting, we'll be right back, but it's getting close to fall planting season. We have some of our favorite blends, some newer blends, Big Boost 365. We have our Power Greens 365. Those have the perennial base. We're actually planting some of that here, Big Boost, Fall Power Greens. Those are some of our favorites, our all time sellers. We're actually taking this strip of clover right here. We're gonna make that a perennial back up there. We're gonna terminate this buckwheat. We'll plant into it in the coming weeks. And then we're gonna hunt right behind me. Mock scrape right there. We're all set up. I hope you are too. 
Check out Pure Wildlife Blends. Now back to the video. The bottom line is there's so much love and goodness that comes from this simple plant of buckwheat, whether it's helping you and aiding you planting big seeds or planting in general going into the fall, limiting weeds, destroying erosion, keeping your soil moist and building your soil. And that's why, you know, I've been pushing it for a long time. Like I said, we had that thigh high, waist high buckwheat in the UP, spread rye in there with my lawn seed and let it go. The following year had a beautiful lawn, mowed the rye out and I was left with that beautiful grass growing uh, in a cabin that I had up in the central UP. So uh, something that can be done. That was done over 20 years ago. I'm still using it today. You can see all the buckwheat we have planted out on our food plots. Uh, we're not doing it just for show. We're not even doing it to sell seed because if you want buckwheat, go to your local elevator. Don't pay us for shipping unless you're buying a pallet at a time or something, it's just too much. And we try to get that price down as much as we can. We don't buy it from a farmer's barn somewhere where we can sell it cheap with a bunch of weeds in it or something. We get actually good buckwheat from our supplier and we have to pay for that. Um, but I encourage you to go buy it somewhere else if you can find it. Uh, it's always cheaper that way. It's good stuff. It'll help your food plots and it'll help you improve your soil and have a great hunt this fall. Help your critters out, help the soil, have a great hunt. What more could be better? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you watching the videos. We have over 600 articles on whitetailhabitatsolution.com. It's all free. And I also appreciate those of you that check out our books. I have five books starting from 2012. We have web classes on the site, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com. Check out Pure Wildlife Blends. I really appreciate you guys that have already purchased our seed. We've had thousands of people. We've shipped to 48 states. We have digital land management through whitetailstrategy.com. That's taking all these ideas and concepts I put in the YouTube videos and digitally transforming your land for you. And then finally, we have our clients and client visits. We'll visit over 300 clients as a group this year. We visit anywhere in the country. Boots on the ground is always the best, but we have a lot of ways to help you from free to client visits and all in between. Check us out again, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, Pure Wildlife Plans, and whitetailstrategy.com.